babes, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of The Hotty Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about the top five, this is ten, but this is the top five mistakes, common mistakes that witches make. Now, this is what I personally have noticed and I wanted to, of course, have an open conversation with you guys so that you don't make the same mistakes. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. The first thing is they scatter their resources. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my phone because I wrote these all down two nights ago and I said I need to talk to my tribe about this. But okay, the first one was scattering their resources. And this is a mistake that I have made because multiple times throughout my journey because we get so excited about capturing and studying, like capturing our notes, capturing our experiences, studying things. <clears throat> And we end up scattering that, meaning we have a dream journal, we have a regular journal, we have a grimoire, we have all different types of like prophecies, everything. Things that have come to us, or notes, or things that we find along our, you know, along our journey, whether we find it through other people's study and other people's research and other people's experiences, maybe we write it on our phones, then we want to, you know, capture our dreams, so then we have a journal for that, we put that in our, in that one journal, and then we put, you know, our notes and, you know, things that we found at the library or doing research in one thing, so all of this information is scattered all throughout, and what I've found is that you end up losing those pieces. I don't know about you guys, but I end up losing those pieces. And those are important pieces of information that just get scattered or I'll find it later and, you know, maybe it'll get be so beat up or maybe it'll get lost in a phone, maybe a phone crashes during Mercury retrograde. But I just found that it's really helpful. And I know this sounds crazy, but maybe to have like two sources. One is a journal specifically for writing down, you know, your emotional um, like emotional day-to-day -day life or in readings. So keep that in one thing and then information, even if it doesn't, you know, all fall under the same category, put it in one spot, put it in one area. So that would be a separate journal. So for me, I have a grimoire, I have a dream journal that goes under my journal. I have a regular journal that I write every day in, the same, under the same thing. I have tarot readings. Every day when I do a tarot reading, even if it's daily pull, I put it in the same journal, which is this one. Then when it comes to the grimoire, that's totally separate. That's information exclusively. But prophecies, they go in the journal, the journal that I write in every day. So there's two, there's two things that I keep with me at all times, and they're all under the same thing. If I write intentions, they go in the same journal that I write because it comes from my heart. So if it's from the heart, I put it in the one journal. If it's information or research and my own personal studies, it goes in a separate journal. And that's something that I don't really, you know, share with others. Let's say I write an intention down or if I write a, a prayer or a petition, I will write it on a piece of paper. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is one of my petitions. I'll write it on a piece of paper and I'll tuck it into the emotional journey because the, the emotional journal because it came from the heart. So that was one thing that I honestly have found that as a witch that I've made that mistake because you end up, again, you end up scattering all of your information and at the end of the day you find you have missing pieces, you know, important things that it is that you wish that you had, you can't find because it's scattered all over and it actually becomes really overwhelming. And it's impossible to keep up with all these different sections. So that's why I say for beginner witches and even advanced witches, witches simplify. In everything that I do, I think that the main thing that I've learned is to simplify, to keep things as simple as possible, including my magic, because it allows you to stay focused. It allows you to, you know, the more focused you are, the more specific you are, it's like a bow and arrow. You know your target, you're aiming towards it. Versus if it's complex and there's all this extra stuff, the energy starts getting like muddled. It starts swirling and then you mentally get muddled and swirl, you know, you know, swirling around in your brain. You can't find things. It just gets too much too soon. It gets overwhelming and yeah, keep it. Oh yeah, I wrote that down. Keep it simple. The next mistake that I find that which is make and that I see a lot is boxing yourself in. And I put the note, it says, you don't need to identify as any one thing. You can be all things. Follow and develop your passions and interests. And I truly believe that. And I find this happening a lot when people 
find they're like, oh my gosh, I really truly am a witch, or I'm really interested in you know this path. I'm really interested in working magic. I'm really interested in setting intention. And they're like, okay, this is who I am. I realize this about myself. Now, because I realize this about myself, I want to identify this and be more specific about who and what I am. But the thing is, is that this is a common misconception when it comes to witches, is that we'll fit under one category. Like, we're going to be a green witch. We're going to be, you know, if, if as a witch, am I a Wiccan? Am I a pagan? What is it that I fit under? Am I a Christian witch? What type of witchcraft do I fall under? And the thing is, or which or intention or whatever what is it that i can categorize myself under and the thing is is that you do not have to be all of one thing you can be all things so you can if you have an interest in astrology study astrology if you have an interest in tarot study that if you have an interest in herbs if you gravitate towards working with fire you if you gravitate towards setting intention and not exclusive <clears throat> exclusively that if you are interested in prayer alone and going to church, that's fine. You can make what it is that, you can be all of these things and none of those things. You don't have to box yourself under one category, even though it is exciting in the beginning to be like, oh my God, this is who I am, but like, who am I? Like, there's always this need to be like, okay, but let's dive in deep and more. And, and, and our brains always wanna kind of like compartmentalize, you know what I mean? We always wanna kind of identify like identify even more in order to because we're so excited to understand this next level of ourselves but what I found is that it gets really frustrating because you're like well this is off limits to me or this is not my jurisdiction nothing is off limits to you you can study you can do anything that you want that's just like a person who says okay I discovered you look in the mirror one day and you're like I'm African-American and then you're like, okay, well, what, what is it that African, African Americans do? We do everything. We do everything. Nothing is off limits to us. We can travel as African Americans. We can, you know, go hiking. We can go horseback riding. We can be interested in arts and reading books. The world is our oyster. And the same thing is true for, you know, finding that you have powers within you. You have gifts within you. Nothing is off limits to you. Just because you fit under this category doesn't mean that now you have to fit the stereotype of all of what that is and what uh, all of what it's understood to be. You can be anything and everything. So I really wanted to say that one too. And the thing is too is that, um, you know, you are under the influence of your spirit. You know what I mean? Your personal spirit and also the spirits that have come before you, at least in my belief system. So your ancestors, your, the blood of your ancestors runs through you to this day. And their interests and their gifts and their skills and their protection is running through you to this very day. So there are going to be things that you are going to be guided to that don't make sense to you because your ancestors have left that. Or it's a part of your path, your journey here outside of your ancestors, outside of your legacy, that you then have to find, discover, to study to take seriously. And you'll know it because it's you're intrigued by it, you're curious about it, you're you're pulled towards it. So for that being said, it's really important for you to honor your curiosities, to honor your passion, to honor your interests, because you're gonna be pulled and guided. My nose is tickling and you guys know what that means. So um, yeah, the next thing is comparison. Don't compare your journey to others. You diminish your power by doing this. And this is so true because I see people comparing my magic, their magic to my magic. And oh my gosh, my nose is on fire right now. Or it's like tickling so hard. But they're comparing their magic to my magic. Or they're saying like, oh, this person did this. Or they did this. Was I wrong? Follow your, oh my gosh, follow your path. Follow your journey. I can't even concentrate. Holy crap. Follow your path. Follow your journey. Um, you're, you can look at others for guidance, you can look to see what others are doing, but don't do it in a way that you compare yourself and be like, well, they did it this way, or this was their ritual. Again, we all have different rituals, we all have different ways of honoring you know, what it is that we're working with, what it is that we're trying to achieve, what it is that we're trying to do in our lives. So it doesn't all fit and look the same. So don't, you know, don't compare yourself to others um, the other thing too is with comparison is that, you know, the quote that says comparison is a thief of joy. That's so true, but also it's a thief of your personal power because you are second guessing yourself. And really your journey is your journey alone. It's up to you, you guys, just forgive me as I'm rubbing my nose. Like, 
that's just how my ancestors talk to me and my spirit guides talk to me always and forever. And for, for some reason, it's like this side of my nose. It's always been that way. But yeah, like your, your journey is going to, and your path is going to teach you different lessons and teach you different ways of doing certain things that you can then contribute and bring back to our community and be like, this is what worked for me. What worked for you? Oh, that's cool that that worked. Maybe I'll try it. Maybe I won't. But honor your feelings, honor what feels right and what feels wrong and respect it because that's, you know, spirit guiding you and that spirit telling you like, this is the way to walk or try it this way or do it this way. All right. So again, follow your interests, follow your passion, what intrigues you, what is pulling you. The biggest, the next biggest um, uh, mistake that I'm seeing witches make is they follow all the rules. <laughs> And again, this is like, you tell me what it is that I need to do. Like, no, you know what? It's good to be under the watch of someone. It's good to be under the leadership of someone because not everyone is a leader and not everyone is a follower. And sometimes leaders end up being followers and followers end up being leaders. And that's okay. It's the balance of powers, which is a good thing. I, as a leader in my community and in my tribe, there are moments, absolutely, especially now, where I invite in the advice and the wisdom of the elders, including my ancestors. I seek them I seek them for advice all the time. Talk to me constantly about what it is that I need to do and for my own personal ritual. What do you want? What do you need? What do I need to do? Talk to me. So that's me asking, as a leader, asking them to allow me to follow them. But at the same time, you can't follow all of the rules. And again, rules are made for being broken. And our, as, as time goes on, we have different types of generations that come through that bring their own wisdom. And we saw that with the indigo children, we saw it with the rainbow children, we saw it with the crystal children. And how the, the different generations bring different energies because the cosmos are constantly changing, which means that as the cosmos changes, the cosmos changes, as the cosmos change, so do we, as above, so below. So we have to then honor, we respect the rules and the traditions and the rituals of those that have come before us, but at the same time, at some moment in our lives, we're gonna deviate from those normal rules and make our own because our generations are changing. And we can take the, yay, my package is here. Dope, dope, okay. <laughs> that moment when your package arrives. Okay, so yeah, we take, um, you know, the different, we take the different rituals of, and the traditions of those that have passed them on before us, and then sometimes we deviate from it, and that's okay. So I also put the note that each ritual tends to be special and unique, especially in the moment. Sometimes, you know, you have this ritual set up, and it's going to look a certain way, and you expect it to look a certain way, and then in the moment, you're kind of guided to do something differently, or you're guided to do an extra step, or to take out a certain step, and then you doing that enhances the ritual, enhances the moment, and helps you to connect with someone new, someone different, meaning like ancestor or a different spirit or whatever. So don't be afraid to break those rules. Um, and I also said, tailor it to match what feels good and right for you. Ancestors and guides will speak to you. The same thing is true with spells and herbs and fire and the elements of it. Don't be afraid to switch the rules up and to change the ritual in some way if you are guided to do it. Don't box yourself in. The last thing is the biggest mistake, I think, one of the biggest mistakes is not doing research. This means jumping in without doing any study of the herbs, um, you know, and that, or, you know, the elements or doing research with your ancestors, respecting them enough to ask for information about them. It could be as simple as you, if your grandmother's still alive, like I, you know, the, one of the last moments that I had with my grandmother, she's still alive now, but the last time her and I hung out, I literally was sitting at her feet and we were talking about magic. And that was such a huge moment because my, my grandmother is highly psychic. <laughs> um, but that's, I don't want to like talk too much about her out of respect for her privacy and stuff like that. But she, um, and it runs in my family too. My mother is highly psychic, highly intuitive. She's a shaman now and, and moving, you know, she's been doing acupuncture um, and her own energy work and stuff like that and just you know, killing the game, but in a good way. But it, for my, my grandma, my grandmother was raised Catholic. So, and from the islands in Jamaica. And sometimes witchcraft, obia is what they call it there, is considered really bad. <laughs> 
And it was just so interesting to be able to sit at my grandmother's feet, literally at my grandmother's feet, and listen to her talk about our family, the women in our family, and their ability to see spirits, and what that looked like, and magic in general, and how like how it was passed on and how there was fear connected to it but still we do ritual interestingly enough you can watch the ritual process in certain things that is just a part of our culture a part of our life a part of our lifestyle so you even asking your your current relatives um about your ancestry if they're comfortable speaking about it or just asking them what was your mother like you know what were her interests what were, what did she like to do? What was she good at? What were her hobbies? Did she smoke? Did she wear red lipstick? Like, what was? What are those things? Because based on what you end up doing is you're learning and honoring your ancestors by researching them, by asking about them, and you can bring that those elements of what you've learned from them and apply them to your ritual to honor them in the now and the present because they're still with us, so much with us. And I've been doing a lot of ancestral work lately, so if you guys would like to do a video, would like me to do a video on that, I'd be more than happy to do that for you guys. But um, also the same thing is true with herbs. You know, a lot of people, I offer so many herbs on my website and uh, within the apothecary. And the herbs that I have in the apothecary are, are benign, but you wanna make sure that you're doing your research and deeply researching them as much as possible. And I'm working on an herbal guide that I'll put on my website for, for free for you guys to access. But there's, you know, some herbs have, you know, even though they're connected to love or even though they're connected to power, they, they, some of them come with conditions. So you want to make sure that you're doing your research, deep research, and not just doing superficial, like going to these blogs. Make sure that the blogs that it is that you are seeking, that you check their credentials and that you check their background. And you do, you don't just go to one page, look at their entire page, look at their entire website. What uh, content, what are they putting out there? Because that, their information, that's coming from their psyche. That's coming from their mind and their perception of things. So you want to make sure that if you're truly getting this information from this source, that it's coming from a place that is aligned with, your, with what you want for yourself. And if not, you don't need to be learning from them because it's not, you, you want to always check your resource. You always, always want to do your research. Um, uh, and the other thing is doing your own research for yourself. And I say this time and time and time again with people who are studying like um, synchronicity with numbers where they'll say, Jess, I keep seeing 222 or 111 or 7171 What does that mean for me? And I've had friends text me and just be like, Jess, this keeps showing up. And I don't care how close you are to me. You have to do the research on your own. I, I could find, I, if I had all the answers, I wouldn't give them to you guys. Because I'm allowing you to take the easy way out. If I have to do the work in order to, if, if you're seeing um, repeating numbers, it's because something, someone is trying to talk to you. And in order for you to have a conversation with them, in order for you to have a relationship with them, you need to open the door. You need to do the work in order to build that relationship so that you don't have to rely on someone else to hear what, someone, what, the, what spirit is trying to tell you. That's like having an intimate relationship with a partner and then, you know, in order for you to communicate with your partner to understand what they're saying, you have to go to a friend to ask them what your partner is saying. No, develop the relationship with your partner so that you guys can have an exclusive intimate relationship with each other. So that's why as, as a business, as, as, a, um, as an intuitive, as a, a you know, energy worker and, you know, doing the work that I do, I could make buku money off of charging people for interpretation and charging people to work with your angels. But why would I want to do that? Like, it just doesn't, I, I feel like people should do things for themselves and learn to do things for themselves versus have someone take the easy way out and be like, tell me what it is that they're saying. Do the work. Connect with your guides. Ask them. Meditate. And if you can't make time for it, then it's not something that's important to you. So make the time for your spirits. Make the time. Do the research. Ask them what's up. All right, you guys, so that's what came through. Honestly, I'm trying to keep my videos under 20 minutes, which is easier said than done because <laughs> I'm a Virgo and I have so much to say, but I also want to give you guys the most information possible. So I hope that that helps. What mistakes have you made during your journey? What mistakes do you see other people doing? Leave them down in the comments. Make sure that you're sub subscribed to the YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.